Hey, hello and welcome back and that's right today it's time for another Plex Media Server test and today it's the turn of the rather modestly specced TS262 from QNAP. This is their brand new 2022-2023 generation 2 bay NAS with a dual core Intel Celeron processor there that with, can be clocked up to 2.9 gigahertz on top of that with integrated graphics on board and 4 gig of memory by default. For a little 2 bay there's quite a lot to play with down there but what about Plex Media Server, can this cut mustard? Well, today we're going to be looking at 720p files, we're going to be looking at 1080p files, we're even going to be looking at a big old chunk of 4K files and hopefully decide whether this NAS is worth your, you and your 4K data. So, a few things straight off the bat and if you've watched my Plex Media Server test videos before maybe fast forward about three three and a half minutes because you've heard it all before but if you're new to these let me tell you a few things now while we're running these tests it's worth highlighting that although we're going to be testing a multitude of different files some files are different uh, are more comparable and more powerful than others to put it into perspective one of the biggest differences you're going to find between these files is to do with compression technique namely HEVC otherwise known as highly efficient video codec or H.265 and H.264. Now, this kind of media has enormous differences. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, HEVC files are more modern thanks to a newer compression technique that was designed and uh, developed by a consortium of particular big names in the multimedia uh, production industry to find a better way to compress large movies. So things you watch in the cinema, those enormous presentations, have to be packaged and shrunk down into something you can buy, be it something you buy online or on a DVD or a Blu-ray. That's what the compression is for. Now, up to about 2016-17, H.264, the open source freely available compression technique, was more than sufficient. But as media got bigger and bolder, more aggressive and huge in size, it just wasn't doing it. So for larger presentations, that new developed compression technique was required. However, because it's um, developed by a consortium that wanted to own it, in order to play HEVC media, you have to be utilizing one of several things. One, a device that has an HEVC license on board, and most hardware manufacturers do not include an HEVC license, as it's very complex to try to get multiple licenses for one device of which they make many, many, many of them. The second thing is if you don't have an HEVC license, you have a client device, such as an Nvidia Shield or some phone or uh, TV devices, that allow you to either install an HEVC license or have the hardware power to perform something called client transcoding. That is, if the file, if you don't have a license, you've got enough power on the device you're watching on to convert the file into another um, format that you're allowed to watch. That requires hardware. The third thing you might need is the conversion that's going to take place, be it to reshape the file because you're watching it on a mobile and you don't really want to watch Avatar in 8K on your phone or you're on a limited internet connection or you don't have the license or a device that can transcode it, that is when you need the NAS to have the power to shape the file and that's what we're looking at when we're looking at these files. It isn't just can this NAS play 4K, it's can this NAS transform that 4K into something playable if you need it to and that's why we talk about conversions and transcoding now a number of you might ask why are we watching this on the web browser why would I not just use the Microsoft Plex client application or an Amazon Fire Stick well we need to make sure that the NAS is doing the heavy lifting we need to not we have to make sure when we're testing these files on the NAS that we're not accidentally saying the NAS is able to do something when really it's the recording laptop. That's why we don't use the client app. To give you an example, say for example we go into the uh, the 1080p and 4k test files here. We list all of the files and for example we try to play a particularly dense file. This one here. This is an HEVC, so utilizing um, highly efficient video codec, and it's 100 megabits per second. We try to play this file, and this is what will happen. It will catch up, it will stutter a little bit, but it does manage to play that file, but it needs to convert that file in order to play it. Now, let's play that same file using 
the Microsoft Plex client for Windows. We go into that NAS there. We go into the testing files there. List by library again. Go down, detailed view. Find the 100 meg file, the HEVC file. And this time when we play it, you'll see this time it's not converting it. It's playing the file natively. Do you may see the odd jump there? That's because of OBS that I'm using to screen record this for, that you're watching right now. But as you can see, it's able to play the original file format. But now the delay is happening on my side. It's not being caused by the NAS. The delay is being caused by my own GPU getting maxed out in a way that it wasn't. Because you can see there, the NAS isn't in 100%. That's why we don't use the Plex client tool to test NASes and their ability to convert files. We have to use the web browser to make sure it's the NAS that's doing the heavy lifting. So... Let's cut straight into our testing. The next thing we're going to do is remove me from the screen here because that's going to be using up or potentially undermining some of our results. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go back into the range of files. First file we're going to test is the matrix. It's a 720p, a very light aspect file there. Um, and while it's doing that, you can see down there, we're running 0 0.7 megabits per second at 720p. It's running absolutely fine because if we go down to the bottom, we can see the light orange that is playback and the dark orange, which is kind of buffering. That's the system lining up the file. And while it's doing that, we can have another look over here on the right-hand side. Because over here, this tells us how much the system is using to do all of the job. Now, sometimes the red line is going to be the NAS's own system CPU use. The green line is Plex. So you'll know the green line is the one that we have to monitor there. Underneath it, we can see the memory. Now, this NAS has 4 gig of memory, but the system's already using a decent amount of memory for its background processes here running a number of different apps. I could turn a lot of those applications off, but by doing so, it's not going to be really realistic for those of you out there that plan to buy this NAS to do lots of things. But ultimately, you can skip around. It's playing this file. It's running absolutely fine. So let's try our next test file. Go back into the 4K trailers, and not the 4K trailers, we go back into the films, and this time we try Little Shop of Horrors. Little Shop of Horrors, of course, um, this is a 1080p file here, nice, relatively high density, um, well over twice uh, the uh, bit rate overall, 1080p, normal sort of audio there, we're seeing no real problems here with regards to playing the file too much. We're seeing a slight bump, but remember we are looking at the green line, not the red line there. We can go ahead, we can skip along, it's running fine, it's running great, and overall, I'd say that's absolutely, perfectly dandy. Let's go back. Now we can make our way into the 4K. We tried 720, we tried 1080p, let's crack on with the 4K testing. Now here, we've got a whole series of test files here to try out, all of which have different containers, different bit rates, and different compression. What do I mean by that? The container is the file format, an MP4, that's normally what most phones record with, at least Android devices that I can speak for. MKV is much better for containing high dense media. You normally find MKVs when you download online. The bit rate is ultimately the amount of data per second uh, that is being processed and managed for that file. So the larger the bit rate, the more data being contended with. And of course, H.264 is the open source immediate playback whereas HEVC is that license-led com uh, uh, compression playback there. And most of the resolutions here, they're slightly different, but they all register as 4K resolution, as long as they're higher than 3,800. So our first test file there, open that up. Playing in original quality, it's a 4K, at just over um, registered 12.3 megabits per second. And the CPU, tiny little bump, tiny little, uh -huh, but that's about it. I think we're absolutely fine to play back this file. We can skip ahead. And it's running absolutely fine there. No problems. Again, I am feeling slightly sluggish by the mouse. I think my uh, local system may have had slight delays there. But overall, we're seeing absolute fine stuff there. Let's make our way onto the next test file. This is a very dense HEVC file. For those of you that watch my uh, videos on the DS93 and uh, 723 from Synology that don't have integrated graphics, you'll know that they really struggled with this file. But even though conversion is needed, because again, we don't have a license to play this, 
uh, for the H.265. What we do have is the hardware resources, thanks to integrated graphics on the CPU, to, to allow this file to be changed. And as you can see, even though it's a big, dense, hefty file, the 262 from QNAP has buffered the whole thing. The CPU hit a maximum 14% utilization and the file is playing like a dream. Lovely stuff. Next up, we'll go to our next one, Beauty of Taiwan. Another dense file, half the bit rate though, so it should play even better. Let's open it up there at the bottom. Yes, we're gonna need to convert. However, we've got the integrated graphics to get the job done here. And really, I think most of the files we're gonna look at over the next few minutes are gonna run fine. The ones I'm interested to see are Black Panther Wakanda, and the Top Gun trailer, because those have been the two files that have largely been NAS breakers in terms of 4K trailers thus far. But right now, this is running absolutely fine. And overall, I can't really fault it. And remember, we are trying to move between a 4K dense file, so we're not going to judge if there's slight delays when we're connecting over a 1 gig network. Overall, absolutely fine. Next up, Wonder Woman. This is, uh, again, 16 megabits per second, 8-bit H.264. This should be child's play. When that last file we were looking at, we still hit just 14% there on Plex Media Server. Now, I'll be surprised if we see much at all. We've seen that transition. That spike's going to go down. But, again, perfectly fine playback there. We're seeing slight stops there. But, again, most of that is to do with things on my side and the utilization of the CPU and onboard GPU maxing out ever so slightly. But, overall more than happy with what we're seeing here in this i would still call this if we weren't using obs to record this that would be absolutely fine for you guys so again now we're going to the dune trailer this is quite a dense little number here 16 megs h.265 and also it's 10 bit hdr and an mkv file this time not an mp4 this is going to be quite a dense little file. This is probably one of the big jumps other than the uh, Wakanda and Top Gun trailer that I mentioned. And we're starting to see that CPU rise up again. But it's playing it. We're getting the buff bu buffering. We've got tons of buffering there. Let's skip forward. Absolutely fine. Let's skip outside of the buffer zone and see how long it takes for the system to catch up. Again, 4K trailer. But ultimately, it's running like a dream, cutting all the way through, with the CPU capping out at 16, on 18.59%. So, fine stuff there. Next up, Spider-Man No Way Home. Again, this is an IMAX trailer at 4K, 8-bit, uh, H.264, 32 megabits per second. So, a high bit rate, but still uh, a non-aggressive and supported uh, compression format there. <clears throat> we're seeing it go through on the nod immediately we're seeing the buffering take over we're not even going to give it much time i'm just going to immediately skip ahead there rather than give it any time to wait seemingly running absolutely fine it's catching up calling that a solid success for us there with the cpu seeing an early spike there again you're going to see these early spikes when we're dealing with higher bit rate media because it's just a lot of data to be passing um Next up, we're going to skip Star, uh, Star Wars because that file is largely broken. And again, very similar to that of the Spider-Man file there, but this time it's the Batman trailer. Should run absolutely fine. And again, another thing I don't really take the time to um, highlight in my videos is when I'm skipping between these files, I'm actually putting a lot of strain on the CPU, flicking between a lot of these files so quickly. So a lot of the time I, I give a kind of secret credit to a NAS that can handle a lot of the chopping and changing that I'm doing between quite dense 4k files so readily and although we saw that initial spike due to the weight of the file because remember look at the size of it aside from the dense audio it's quite a hefty little bit right there for that file it still played the file beautifully well there next up Black Panther Wakanda again this is a beefy one 32 megabits per second mkv 10 bit hdr and it's an hevc file there We'll open that up we're seeing that conversion immediately taking place how are we going to play this file let's have a little look we'll scroll down to the bottom there we're seeing buffering take place and it is able to stay on top of what we're doing cpu utilization is clearly spiking but not too much there we're seeing something pretty similar to what we saw earlier on with dune <clears throat> And although system spikes, which again is quite surprising we're seeing that there, and that might largely be down to just the sheer size of some of these files that we're pulling, 
Um, we can skip ahead quite readily and it seems to be doing okay. We're seeing the slight delay that we expect from a 4K file, but overall happy with what we're seeing here. Let's come out there and we'll go down to Avengers Endgame. Actually, we're gonna skip Avengers because we know it's gonna play this file because we've played dis not dissimilar files to that. Let's go straight to the big one, which is this one at the bottom, Top Gun Maverick, which again, 4K IMAX. It's an H.264, but it's 80 megabits per second, 10-bit HDR. That's a hefty old file. And this is one where our network connectivity and storage media inside, because remember, this is just a two-bay hard drive NAS. This is when we start entering the arena of when the actual storage media needs to be faster. This is when you want to look at at least a four-bay. And although we're seeing that initial spike, and it capped out at quite a surprising 41% spike at the bottom there, the NAS killer file, we're seeing it perhaps being the file that stopped. This may be the end of the road for this NAS. Now, this is not an average file. This is quite an unusual little file there, having such a, you know, a dense audio media and such a high bit rate. This is when we see that probably the cap the files that you're going to play on this is around the 60 megabits per second bitrate mark and if you're running native 4k so h.264 4k you'll do even better but i do think as far as this hardware is concerned 60 megabits per second bitrate is as high as you can go but this has been my plex testing of the qnap ts262 i hope you enjoyed it again we will be comparing more nazis on plex later this year so stay tuned for those but apart from that i hope you've enjoyed this video there should be a link to an article on this test below if you want to learn more click subscribe as we do more tests on this nas and use the free advice section over on nas compares and the free community support forum on ask nas compares and finally if this video has helped you and if this video has convinced you to buy one of the products that i talk about here on the channel and you were going to go to amazon anyway use the links in the description to take you there not only do they not cost you a penny to use and they'll take you to amazon anyway but anything and i mean anything you buy there will result in a small kickback coming back to nas compares and it's just me and eddie here and it helps us carry on doing what we do thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time